Hello everyone, I am Kanisha Grayson, founder and CEO of The Art of Applying, and today we have one of our superstar clients who is here to share her story of working with The Art of Applying. Uh, her name is Lex. Hi Lex. Hey Kanisha. So great to see you on video. So great to see you too, I'm excited. Yeah, no, I'm really excited. We've talked, to Lex and I have spoken a lot on Zoom, but never with video, so it's really nice to, to see, see you and see you in your space. All right, so let's jump right in. What I like to do on these uh, videos is have you share your results right up front so we can celebrate you and just know the, the end of the story and then we can go back to the beginning. Okay, great. So I just found out this week that I was accepted into Wharton, Berkeley Haas, and Michigan Ross. And uh, Michigan Ross is with a cons full consortium fellowship, which is super exciting. Berkeley Haas also offered me a full fellowship and Wharton has offered me a very significant scholarship as well. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Congratulations. This is phenomenal results. Very well deserved. Not surprised, but I am very delighted. <laughs> so let's, how does it feel to, um, and my understanding is that Wharton is the dream. Right. Okay. So how does it feel to get a huge a six figure scholarship? from Wharton. How does that feel? And get a full scholarship from Haas and a full scholarship to Ross. It feels really awesome. It feels like all of my hard work these last eight, nine months has been worth it. I'm like on the other side because it was definitely a grind doing all the studying for the tests to get my target scores to constantly be working my essays and to make sure that I was portraying myself and my vision and why I wanted an MBA. Um, and so it feels, it feels really awesome. I feel blessed and definitely feel like my, the investment that I made in myself was well worth it. That's beautiful, beautiful. And um, a, one thing that the clients always really, really want to know when I do these interviews is they want to know the person's stats. So I would like you to share whatever of your stats you would like to share. So by that, I mean age, GPA, um, test scores, years of work experience, maybe your industry you work in, whatever kind of profile stats that you are comfortable sharing. I know that they'll want to know so they can um, sort of do the math to figure out like, oh, okay, is this something that could be possible for me? Sure. I am very, very happy to share all of my stats. Um, so I had, so my target scores for, I, I took the GRE. I'm definitely a GRE person and not a GMAT person. I was very happy to see that all of the top schools except GRE. <laughs> so um, my target score for um, the verbal on GRE was 164, uh, which is what I had already gotten on a previous test when I took the GRE for the first time three or four years ago. Um, and then my target score for math was 160. Um, and my, when I had well, the very first time I took the GRE, I had only gotten a 152. So it definitely felt like it was a big jump for me to make, particularly the first time that I took it. I was only working as a server and as a substitute teacher. So I had a lot of time to study and I felt like I had done my very best and that that 152 was the best that I could do. And to think that I was going to be able to get anywhere near 160 on math working, I work anywhere from 50 to 60 hours a week. Um, and so I was like, oh, my God. But, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my best. And I ended up getting a 158 on, um, on my quant and got a, one, a 164 again on my verbal. Um, and for writing, I had a, I want to say it was a 4.5. Yes, a 4.5. Um, so I was very happy with those scores, only two, only two points away from my target math score. And I was just like, okay, I'm good. I'm done studying. I'm going to focus on writing some really stellar essays now. Um, and is there anything else? Oh, and I'm 20. I'm 28. No, I'm not. I'm 27. My partner is 28. And I always think I'm the exact same. How old am I? <laughs> yeah, she just turned 28 last Sunday. Um, so no, I'm 27. I just turned 27 in October. <laughs> Um, did I miss anything on the stats? Um, well, we have, uh, your GPA. Oh, yes. Yeah. So my GPA was a 3.86. Nice. And yes. Mm -hmm. 
Beautiful. So uh, one thing that Lex mentioned is her target score. Um, so by that, Lex, you're referring to the score that our team, looking at all your particular background, what we told you, this is the score to aim for to feel for us to feel really great. Correct. Mm -hmm. So just to be clear for every uh, for the people watching uh, here at the Art of Applying, if you're in the application accelerator, what we'll do is we'll look at your particular profile and give you a minimum test score, uh, meaning this is what you need to hit to even be competitive for your schools, a target test score, which is like we feel really good, and then an exceptional test score, which is we feel great uh, about your scores. So Lex ended up getting uh, exceptional, beautiful, outstanding application results, even though she didn't even get, like, hit all the way her target test score, but she definitely hit her minimum and got very close to her target. So that's what she's talking about when she says target test score. Um, and Lex, did you use the, the Art of Applying, like, test prep resources to, to get toward, get from that 152 on quant to the 158? No, not really. I mostly used, so I used Magoosh, and okay. that was helpful for me. Um, and for the, uh, I did one test prep call with, um, with the testing um, person for the Art of Applying. Um, and the advice that he had about repetition of the same types of problems was helpful for me. Okay. So I implemented that into my study program of making sure that I was repeating the same types of problems and evaluating if I was getting better on those things. So mm -hmm. that was helpful. Okay, great. Um, wonderful. So the way anyone becomes a client uh, of the Art of Appliance is they first have a free call called a breakthrough call. So Lex, tell us, um, why did you sign up for a breakthrough call? And, and actually, how did you even find out about the Art of Applying? You know, so I had been following the Art of Applying for several years, and I don't even know how I first found out about you all. It was the first time I had ever heard of um, an admissions consulting firm. And I was really attracted to it because it was started by this black woman who had graduated from top schools. I was like, this is real. Okay, I'm very intrigued by this. And so I just followed the blog for a really long time because I knew that someday I would go to grad school. So I think I've been following it since soon after I graduated from college. So around 2013, 2014. That's a long time. That's four yeah, years. Really yeah. awesome. I've been getting your blog post for a very long time. Um, and so when I decided last year that, well, actually this is still this year, that I was going to apply for grad school, I was like, I'm going to explore and see if maybe this is something that I want to do, pursuing, you know, becoming a client. And so I, saw, I got an email that said sign up for a breakthrough call. I was just like, oh, okay, this is really good timing. I was thinking about what should I do? How should I explore this? And I got the email. So I signed up for a breakthrough call um, and uh, had, a, it was a really, really awesome conversation. It was just a great exercise. Even if I hadn't decided to become a client after that, it's so in depth about why do you want to do this degree? Why are you thinking about this? It was a very reflective conversation and was helping me to think through things that um, some things that I hadn't thought about myself or really taking the time to put into words. Um, and so it was really helpful. And one of the things um, that came up was why was I thinking about becoming a client of the art of applying? And, um, and so for me, when I was in college, I, I was very fortunate enough to do a lot of prestigious scholarships and fellowship opportunities. But we had people at my school whose job it was to help you through that. And as an undergraduate, that was that service was paid for for me to have somebody who knew the ins and outs of whatever program I was applying for to help help me, which is especially important because I was a first generation college student. I didn't know any of this stuff. I know I knew that I needed support and I was glad that my school had that. And so I'm thinking about now as, you know, uh, uh, coming to be a graduate student where I'm going to be applying, where I was going to be applying for multiple schools and multiple fellowship and scholarship opportunities all at one time. Um, and working a full-time job, I was like, well, I, you know, I need that guidance again, just like I had back then. But this time I'm going to need to invest in that on my own. 
And I believe that that is what's going to help me make sure that I'm able to portray myself in the best light. I know that I'm a great candidate for all of these schools, but I also know that I need support to make sure that comes through in all of my application materials. And so that's why the breakthrough call was really helpful for me, just providing that reflective space for me to think about what my path is and how am I going to get there. Beautiful. And one of our, our policies with our breakthrough call is that we ask people to bring anyone who's important in their life that's going to be involved in the application process. So for some people, that might be a parent or both parents. For other people, it's a partner. My understanding is you did bring your partner to the call. Um, talk, to, talk to us about how you felt when you got that email saying, hey, we need you to bring your partner to the call if that person is important to your application process. Was there any resistance or confusion or like, I don't need him to be there. Talk to us about that. You know, it was funny because I did put him down at first because I didn't know. Because it just says, is there anybody that's like important to your decision? And so I put, I put my partner down. And then when I, we had scheduled the call, I found like, oh, no, they need to be there. I was like, oh, well, I don't need him to be there. He's not, he's not, I'm paying any money that's, that I'm paying is coming out of my own money. So <laughs> he doesn't have to like be a part of like the decision making process, but he just, there's a thought partner for me. And so rather than having him on the call with me after getting off the call, I just like discussed it with him, like how everything went and how I was feeling and if I wanted to move forward. And he was really, really helpful in that. And he's also what is applying to grad school himself. And so he ended up actually after my call and me signing up, becoming a client himself. So that was really great for me because then I got my nice, uh, my nice um, recommendation bonus. So that was great. And now he was able to get that get the support that he needs as he's going through his grad school process. Wonderful. So one thing I want to point out is Lex, we asked Lex to bring her partner and she's like, actually the decision is mine. He's more of a thought partner. I'm paying on my own. So when you get that, if you get that email from us saying, Hey, bring your partner, like we prefer if you bring the person, but Lex was very, very clear that she didn't need him on the call and also that she was going to make the decision on her own. So I would just say to everyone out there watching is if we ask you to bring your partner to the call, you need to be ready to make that decision on your own. Um, if you don't bring them to the call, if there's, if you're going to want to like, think about it with them and talk through it with them. That's great, but you should bring them to the call. And it worked out for Lex and her partner. Now he's our client and he's a, he's a great client and I cannot wait to do one of these interviews with him as well. Um, so how did you feel about investing in yourself after, and I imagine your college application process, even as a first generation um, applicant to college, I can imagine that your results were really exciting and amazing and you probably were courted by a lot of colleges and that you didn't pay someone to help you. And also for all your prestigious fellowships, you had the people at the college. So for the most part, you've never had to pay for, right. for help to get these wonderful awards and things like that. Talk to me, and you already talked about it before, but how did it feel making a significant investment in this application process for business school? At the beginning, it was very tough um, after, like, a, at the end of the breakthrough call when you're, like, really getting to the point where you have to make a decision. I was like, well, this is, this is a very big decision. This is, this is going to be a significant investment. And, but I was, you know, just like I said before, I was like – Getting a top degree cost a lot of money. And I was very, um, I was decided that if I don't get a full scholarship, that I'm not going. I cannot afford um, to go into significant amounts of debt, but I want to go to a top business school. And it was, and so I decided, but I, so I decided that in making this investment in myself, I know that this is what the result is going to be. I'm going to put in the work. And like I said, I know that I'm a great candidate and it was all about for me, do I want to make this investment to make sure that all the, all the great parts of my story and what I know I bring to the table come through in every part of my application and really relying on experts who I felt confident would be able to help me do that. 
Um, and I was just like, I went, it was funny because I said this, um, I said this to the breakthrough consultant. I was just like, with this investment in myself, I, I'm paying for my graduate degree right now. She was like, yeah, she's like, you're right. And I was like, I'm, I'm paying for it right now. Um, and so it's really, really great to, because that's the mindset that I went into it with. And that's because I'm also believe in speaking things into the universe. I'm a very spiritual person and I'm very careful with my words. And so I've had that mindset this entire time that I have already paid for my degree. And I am just putting in the work to make sure that happens and comes to fruition. And so it's really awesome to be on the other side of that and to know that my investment was very well worth it when I, I, everything I said was true. Um, and yeah, just to see, I'm reaping the benefits now and I have all these great offers to choose from. Oh, beautiful. And you really did speak it into existence. Lex, you, you said with this investment, I am paying for graduate school and you, you literally did it. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And just for everybody out there watching, we do not make any guarantees. So nobody told Lex like, oh yeah, if you work with us, we promise we'll get you a full scholarship. We cannot make a guarantee like that. But what we can guarantee is that we can guarantee, I can, base, I can guarantee that you will feel so much better investing in yourself up front to get expert help in this process than trying to do it on your own, getting results back, and, and actually maybe even a little bit of success and wondering, hmm, if I had just gotten more help, could I have done even better? Right. Because right. like you said, Lex, you believed in yourself as a candidate, so you would have gotten into some schools. Right. But maybe without as much money or no money at all, exactly. it's a, a big difference. So um, with even just not without even getting a full scholarship yet from Wharton, um, you, you know, your six figure plus offer is, is, is 10 X of your investment. So right. I'm right. That's just one school, but that doesn't even count the, the full ride at Haas um, and the full ride at Ross, nor the huge, jump in earning potential, regardless of you working in nonprofit, public, or private sector, with, with your, your Ivy League degree you're going to have. Absolutely. And I would tell people all the time that there is no way that I could have done this without support. I, because, like I said, I work 50 to 60 hours a week. I know a lot of top candidates who are applying to these schools. They also work similar hours. And I was also determined that I was going to apply for all my schools round one to have the best possible options for um, acceptance and scholarship offers. And there is no way that I would have been able to apply to all those schools round one without support, without getting that constant feedback of oh, I'm, I'm submitting my essays this is what I have to offer right now and then being able to three days later if not sooner being able to get feedback to help me to continue improve constantly to have that that um that constant feedback cycle that was so valuable and it was what enabled me to get all my stuff done on time by round one Beautiful. While working 50 to 60 hours a week. Yes. I love it. And talk to me about why you chose to work with the art of applying versus, uh, you've talked about versus doing it on your own, but versus working with another firm. You did mention that it was uh, exciting to see a company started by a black woman who went to Harvard Business School. What else? Yeah, so I, from everything that I had seen in the blog over the years, I just felt, I felt really comfortable. I actually didn't even look at other consulting firms because the only reason why I had ever really considered it because I had been following your blog for so long and I just felt really, I felt really comfortable and I like that you all not only supported with the school applications, but also with any fellowship and scholarship um, applications that I would need help with as well. And so that was huge for me. Cause like I said, if I, the, the scholarship money is everything I'm, I'm going for full tuition, um, and zero and zero student loans. That is, that is the goal. Um, and so to be able to know that I was going to not only get help with, uh, with the schools themselves, but also with scholarship offers and negotiating when it came down to get it to getting higher, um, scholarship offers from schools, that was really important. Definitely. And that's what Lex and I will be working on now, um, probably over the next 
uh, two to four weeks is taking her full ride offer from Haas and her full ride offer from Ross. We'll probably lean more on the full ride offer from Haas um, just because they're ranked higher uh, to then negotiate with Wharton. Um, I will not be doing it directly. I'll be coaching Lex on how to do it uh, to request, humbly request additional financial aid. And I feel hopeful that we'll, we'll be able to get that. I feel very uh, confident that we will be able to get some more out. And um, even if it's, only ten thousand dollars more it will make a huge difference um one one thing i love to share is that every ten thousand dollars that a person can avoid taking out in student loans is roughly one hundred dollars every month for 10 years less that they will pay so it matters even even just ten thousand dollars and I've mentioned this before, Lex, I, I think you may know this is a part of my story that I graduated with about 130K in student loans from Harvard Kennedy School and Harvard Business School. Um, it grew to 150K because I'm a writer and an entrepreneur. So those early days were very lean, uh, meaning like not very, making very much money at all. And I've since been able to pay it off uh, actually early. So I paid it off in seven years um, because of the success of the art of applying but it is crushing. It is crushing. And Lex, I know that you work with a lot of um, uh, people of color, low income people, the community, and to be able to now graduate from a top business school, if, it, if you decide to, let's say Wharton doesn't give you a full ride and you go, go to Haas instead, like we already, like no matter what, like you're going to business, you have the choice to go to business school for free. Right. Talk to, talk to us about, I don't know. I can imagine you've saved up some money for school. What are you going to use that money for instead? I am using this for my housing, all to make sure I'm able to travel. There's a lot of travel during business school, and I love to travel. And so I'm excited to be able to travel. I want to be able to make sure that I take full advantage of the experience and you know, not live lavishly, but be comfortable, you know, because I'll be working really hard. I want to make sure that I'm still taking care of myself, eating well, um, able to go see my partner who most likely will be at a different school across the country. So having money to fly out to, to see him um, at least every couple months. So, you know, just all the things with, because that's the thing too about, um, school is not only you have to take into account the tuition you still have to live and eat and you want to go out and hang out with people and make friends and not be a hermit um and all unfortunately all of that costs money and where you're going to live and health insurance and so um that's what i will be using my other money for that's right and then also um the freedom now that you will have after school with choosing where you want to work you're not going to be uh, lots of people want to go into management consulting and investment banking, but also a lot of people go into it when their heart would really rather go into something in the social impact sector, but it just doesn't pay enough. And as we're seeing in the news, like this public service loan forgiveness is not as reliable as we thought. Um, so and unless you're independently wealthy, a lot of people have to make their career choices also based on um, you know, how much it pays. And obviously I can imagine you wanna be paid well, but now you have complete freedom to choose where you go work. Right, which is very exciting. And um, yeah, like I said, I'm, I am a first generation college student. I was blessed to get um, a full tuition scholarship during my undergraduate degree and really only having to take out loans to cover room and board and so being able to continue that path of having very minor student loans is uh re I'm, I'm really grateful no i'm very happy for you uh are do you are you open to telling us where you went to college and also just more yeah. about your personal story yeah so i went to the university of maryland baltimore county it is a uh, a medium-sized school in Baltimore County and just right outside of Baltimore City. It's a great school full of wonderful, nerdy people like myself. Um, and it was only 45 minutes away from where I grew up in Bowie, Maryland. My parents are from D.C. Um, I, both my parents were school bus drivers throughout most of my childhood and me growing up. Um, my mom is still a school bus driver. My father is a full-time Uber driver. 
Um, so they are extremely proud of me. They've worked really hard throughout my life to make sure my siblings and I always had opportunities that they didn't growing up in D.C. And so I just so I've always been, had a sense of wanting to make sure life was better for other people because I know that I'm I'm really blessed. My family is lucky. Lucky. Not every family got to escape a cycle of poverty like my parents did. And so that's where my passion for service comes from and wanting to, and my commitment to economic development in low income black communities. Um, that's what I, that's that's what I am committed to doing. And so and that's why I'm pursuing an MBA is bringing that uh, bringing that degree and that toolkit that I'm getting. The network is extremely important, which is why I want to go to a top business school and using all of those resources to benefit the communities that I care about. Um, but, yeah, that's me. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. I didn't know that. And I think that was really valuable, important information for people to know. I I um I did not grow up in like a low income household, but I grew up in a very high crime, low income neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, and um, actually, growing up, my neighborhood had the highest teen pregnancy rate in the U.S. Oh wow! Um, that was that was our claim to fame. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just important. I remember going to college. I went to Pomona College, which is a very wealthy school, and I remember feeling very alienated because it felt like everybody was so rich. And for me, what was shocking was even the students of color were from wealthy families. So I was just like, oh, where are the poor people at? And like, I, I found them, but like, um, I found them, but I was, it was very challenging to get to school. I remember like, not knowing what tortellini was when I went through the cafeteria and the guy behind me was like, it's like ravioli. And we're like, we're good friends now. But, um, and like a, the, the school went on a ski trip and I was like, I don't have clothes for ski trips. So I think it's very important um, class awareness and mm -hmm. for, for you to have shared that so that people aren't watching this video, like, well, good for her. She has a trust fund that she tapped into to pay for this program. Um, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, absolutely. My, um, yeah, I've, pay, I've paid for all of my own education. Um, my parents, you know, they love me and support me in so many ways, but they wouldn't be able to. They told me very early on when I was in high school, they're like, if you want to go somewhere that's not Bowie State University, which is a great school, but I wanted to um, go elsewhere, um, you need to get a scholarship. I actually was in Navy, junior Navy ROTC when I was in high school and was considering joining the military to pay for college. Um, but, you know, was thankful to be able to get scholarships um, so I could have, have some other options. Um, but yeah, my, parent, my parents worked really, really hard um, to just to always provide for our family. They, they grew up in low income households, but they um, just through their hard work were able, we, I grew up in a middle income household. Um, but yeah, it was, they, they worked and that's where my uh, inspiration comes from is them and hearing stories of what their childhood looks like and be able to see how different they made sure that our childhoods for my siblings and I were very different. That's right. And how many siblings do you have? I have an older brother who is, oh my goodness, he is, I think about to turn 38, 39 right now. I've, I've, I lose track once people hit about 30. I'm, I, as you can see, I've also lost track of my yeah, own age. age. <laughs> <laughs> and, then my, and then my younger sister is about to turn 26. Oh my goodness, it's just too much. People are getting older. I'm getting older. It's crazy. Mm -hmm, yeah. Okay. Wonderful to get one before and one after. And what were your biggest fears in the application process? It sounds like you had a lot of confidence in yourself as an applicant, but what were some of your fears while uh, applying, whether you were already working with us or before you were working with us? I would say um, my, the one thing that I was nervous about was being able to get a good test score. Like I'm very confident in my writing. I've always been a good writer, but I have always struggled with math. And so, and for a long time, I, you know, this, I wasn't sure if I could apply to business school, go to business school, because I really have always struggled with math since I was in fourth grade. I have like an embarrassing story from fourth grade where I was just like embarrassed in front of the whole class in math, during math. And so, well, you know the story. Oh, okay, so now I'll tell you. Okay, so what happened was we were doing long division. I thought I was done okay in math until we got to long division. 
And we were doing like a game in class where every, where the whole class is divided into two teams. The teacher says a problem and the two people are competing to see who's going to solve it the fastest. And so I literally could not get past the first step and the whole class is watching. And it was just mortifying because, of course, you know, your team is depending on you. And I can't, it looks like I don't know anything because I can't even get past the first step. And so it's even more pressure. I already don't know it. And now I'm doing, not knowing it in front of people. Um, and then so after, you know, I completely fell that the teacher asked me in front of everyone, are you coming to tutoring? And so that made me, it made, but it was upsetting for me because I knew that I would I would like to come tutoring I need tutoring but my parents work who's gonna who's gonna come pick me up from school if I can't take the bus home right. and so that made it even more upsetting is that I you know I felt like there was this help that I couldn't get because I don't have the resources for somebody to come pick me up after school because my parents have to work um, so that just so that was my embarrassing story from fourth grade, and I struggled with math for a, I always had to work really really hard, and I got A's and B's, but I had to I had to study a lot because my grades were always important for me. It didn't come easily for me, um, and so so by the time you know I graduated college, I've always been interested in business and having my own business someday, and. Um, and consider business school. I was like, I don't know if that's realistic because I'm I, I struggle with math. <laughs> and then once you know you you know over the years and you just you know get confidence in yourself or you just see more people who look like you and have backgrounds like yours and you start to develop more confidence in what you're able to do and um, and you know also saying that business schools are really looking to they're not looking for a traditional finance people all the time now they really do want these people from different backgrounds and have all of these awesome experiences to contribute and so seeing how that the culture of business school has changed and just becoming more sure of myself over the years and what I bring to the table um, was you know what and what I'm also passionate about doing within economic development is what led me to finally take the plunge to apply to business school but you know, the quant score, I was, I was concerned about that. I was going to be able to get a high enough score to be considered competitive, not only just to be admitted, but to get scholarship funding. Yes, yes, but that worked out good. And what did you like the best about working with the art of applying? Uh, the, my favorite part definitely is just how organized everything keep like, how organized everything is and the editing feedback. Those were the two, you know, most valuable things to me is I just felt a huge weight that was off my shoulders. Once I became a client, I felt like as everything is going to be taken care of as long as I do the work. And that's what I felt like. I felt like everything was organized for me. I felt like I had all the support I needed to get my questions answered. Whenever I had a question, I had people that I could ask and that could guide me. Um, and being able to get, like I said, the constant feedback on my essays, I could get them back and get them done. That was invaluable to me. Um, because, you know, once you, what's really like, part of like what takes the weight off your shoulders is once you have this draft and it's done and you can submit it, it doesn't even have to be good. Yeah. So she means submit to us for, right. for editing. Right. You can, yeah, you can submit it for editing and you will get this great feedback of how to make it better and you can continue to work on it until it's ready. I don't have to like agonize over it for days and days and try to figure out, how to make it better myself. I can just like, okay, I have, I'm, this is my best that I have to offer right now. I'm sending it and let's see what, I, and let's see what I get back. That was huge for me. I was just like, and, that's, and I have referred another friend who's applying for, um, who's applying for dual degrees right now in public policy and business school. Um, and so, but yeah, it's like, I, this is, this is, this is how I'm able to get everything done on my timeline is because I have this support, the editing feedback and the organization and just the support, the overall support and the community was great. Talk more about the community. 
no other company has this community aspect to working with their clients. So talk, talk to everybody about the community. Yeah, definitely. So the com- you get to see the community in different ways. Of course, one where you're in the boot camp with these people who are all new clients with you who are really getting into this this process with you and you're all like going through it together and you get to hear each other's questions, which is really helpful because they, sometimes people come up with things that you haven't considered or, um, and so it's just really here and it's really cool to hear what other people's experiences are as well. Um, so that's helpful. And then I was able to connect it with somebody where she and I are friends on Facebook now. She actually lives yeah, yeah. Her first name. Who is that? Yeah. Her her name is um, Carrie. Oh yeah, Carrie's wonderful. That's so special. Yeah, <laughs> Carrie, yeah, Carrie, yeah, Carrie's awesome. So she and I have been friends on Facebook for a while and have been um, just like supporting and rooting for each other throughout the way from the time we were both testing to now we're we're in the stage of writing. Um, and when uh, I wasn't able to be on the call last week, so I was a, I was I had a crazy work day, um, but it was announced about my offer to Berkeley. And so when she heard it, she like messaged me on Facebook to congratulate me. So that was really nice. Um, so, yeah, so it's awesome to have this community of people who are going through the process with you and how you get to hear their stories and their backgrounds and what their challenges are. And you just you learn you learn a lot that way. Yes, and the reason why it is so important to me to have this community instead of each client just working in isolation with their consultant is that there is so much learning and friendship and support and celebration that can happen. Um, And there's, I always try and tell you all this, but the the 80 people that we all, we took on as clients in, in this last season, you all are not competing against each other. There are literally... 10,000 people applying to Harvard Business School, Wharton, whatever, and y'all are just 80. So Mm -hmm. it's nice to have like this cohort of people similar to what you'll have in business school, like a section of people that you can support each other. You all speak a common language. And then also, Lex, you're going to have this network now Mm -hmm. of all of our clients. There's probably at this point a thousand people at all these different schools. Um, So that'll be nice as well. And I also want to talk about the referrals. Thank you for referring your partner. He's a fantastic client. Thank you for referring your friend. She's a fantastic client. And my goal for you, Lex, is that you refer so many people, you recoup your entire... What is my goal too, (laughs) Kanisha? I want you to recoup your entire investment. (laughs) So you just just keep them coming. Oh, absolutely. A lot of people are going to reach out to you. When they see on LinkedIn, when you update your LinkedIn to say, I am a... MBA candidate at Wharton School of Business, like you are, people are going to start coming out of the woodworks, people from college, your friend's brother's cousin, like Pookie, like they're going to come out of the woodwork and they're going to, what they're going to want a lot of times Lex, is for you to help them for free. And I know you're a very generous, kind person, but after a while it does become burdensome. So you can help yourself and help them by just sending them to us, get your referral. Thank you. They get their discount. Um, and you get to focus on your fun, fabulous life in business school. Oh, absolutely. It's fun. That was, uh, that reminds me of one of the questions that came up during the breakthrough call is because I was asked, do I have friends at these schools that I want to go? Like, yeah, I have a lot of friends who attended top schools and business and policy. And, and I was asked, well, so why, why aren't you leaning? Do you, you can have them edit your essay. I was just like, all my, I, all my friends are busy like me. I was like, I would, I can't, I, I would not ask them. To look, they might, if I were to ask them, I might ask them to look at one essay one time. And I was just like, that is not the level of, I, I need more than that to go to the business schools that I want to go to. I can't have, and then if they, you know, because they're kind and, you know, and wonderful, they'll look at it, but they're busy. They'll probably, it'll probably take two weeks. I'm not going to get edits back in three days when I really need them so I can continue improving it. And so, um, so yeah, I, I may I may look at I may look at one essay, just like I said, maybe some from <laughs> There you go. The one the friends and family maybe. one essay look. Maybe. I was like this maybe. I was like, mm-mm. I said I, I I love my friends and respect their time too much to ever ask them to take on that responsibility. That's that's really helpful because a lot of people I did not 
know people in, in business school and policy school and things like that. Um, so I had one person I knew who had gone to Harvard who did read my essays once and helped guide me a little bit. But um, yeah, admissions consulting, I believe existed when I was applying, but I did not know about them, if that makes any sense. So um, thank goodness this is my gift. So I was able to get myself in. But for the most part, I would I, I have coaches for everything. Um, Lex, uh, um, it's nice for me to hear that you are interested in starting a business. So many of our clients, so many just black Americans, period, are very entrepreneurial already, um, have side hustles uh, or family businesses, whether informal or formal, or want to have their own business. And um, what was the point of me saying that? But, oh, the point of me saying that is the art of applying absolutely exploded in the last two years. And that was when I invested in a, in a business coach, mm-hmm. uh, a meaningful mm-hmm. investment in a business coach. And it was scary but they, they helped the art of applying go from just in the last two years, Lex, um, and you've been following for four years, so I wish I could give the number from four years ago, but I don't know it, but um, from, a, let's just say $200,000 in revenue to a million. Wow, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. That is amazing. Yeah, coaching matters. It matters. <laughs> it really it, does. It matters when when... And, you know, part of my whole, you know, beliefs and how I work of when you invest in yourself and invest in the things that you want, it will come to fruition. But if you're, if you're scared and you're not, you're not, that the, the universe is going to feed that energy back to you. You will, if you're, if you're scared and you're not really taking the plunge, that, you know, that energy is going to be fed back to you. But if you are investing in yourself and you're confident and you're just, you know, putting joy and coming from a place of strength, the universe will feed that energy back to you um and so and that's how that's how I operated when I was like worried about (laughs) when I was a little bit worried about my quant score I uh, oh yeah I actually have it right here oh show us I made I made my oh this is oh oh, that's wonderful so okay what Lex did is she made her own score report with the score she was determined to get, this is beautiful. Yeah, I love it. It and so I looked at it every day while I was studying. I was just like, I'm already thankful for achieving my score. That's like all the, the whatever score I get, that's what I need to get my into schools and get my full tuition. And so that's the energy that I put into the universe. And so that's how I operate in my life with everything is just be grateful and already claim my successes and what I know. I I love it. Perfect client. Okay. (laughs) So what would you like to say? Is there anything else you want to just share? Let me, let me articulate some of the thoughts that people watching this video might think. Well, good for her. It worked for her, but I don't know if it's going to work for me. Um, Also, well, she seems really similar to Kanisha. They even a little bit look alike. Like, <laughs> if you're not a Kanisha, then it's not going to work for you. Or, um, well, this person, she seems extroverted and outgoing, and I'm introverted, so I don't know if it'll work for me. Or is this program only for Black people? Those are all the kinds of things that I know people are thinking. So talk to us. Talk to those people. All right. Well, one, I will tell you from the community, this program is for everybody. Anybody that knows that they they worked really hard, they have a passion for what they want to do with their lives, and they know why they're ready to take this next step of going to graduate school, and you're ready to do the work um, to make it happen. Um, that then if th- those things are match who you are, then the program is for you because that's what it takes. It takes commitment and hard work. So even though you have this awesome team of experts who are going to support you every step of the way, you are doing the work. Nobody's doing the work for you. So if you're not ready to commit the time and energy that it takes 
then you may need to wait another year or wait another cycle um, until you are ready for that. Um, that's really what it's about is being ready to do the work and knowing that you have the experience and story that you want to tell. Even if you might not quite know, have all the pieces of what that story is yet, the team will help you pull those nuggets out of yourself of how to tell your story. But that's, re that's really it in terms of what you need to know of if it's for you. Um, and in terms of if it, you know, I'm not being sure if it will work for you because you're not sure if you fit a certain profile. Everybody, I can also tell you from, you know, the community, everybody is different. Um, there is no one story or resume that defines the people um, and the clients. Everyone is different. From my partner who's in the program to my friend who's in the program, we're all very different. But what we have in common is um, just for us, uh, we're all service-minded people. So that happens to describe our our focus and our commitment. And we're really hard. We're really hard workers. Um, and I was. You have to. You have to be ready. You have to be ready to make an investment in yourself. You have to believe in yourself and that you're worth the investment. That's what it was for me. Like I said, I know that I'm a great can. I've worked really, really hard throughout my life. And oh, for people who don't know, I was a. I was a teacher. I was a public school teacher. Um, to a year, actually a year and a half ago, I taught first grade in D.C. in Anacostia, and I taught fourth grade in East Baltimore in um, poor communities, um, which I was very passionate about, and it was the hardest thing I ever done. <laughs> so, if you think that you have to have a certain background, no, I was, I was, I was teaching 16 months ago, um, and so it's just all about claiming your story and who you are and knowing that you're worth the investment in yourself. It, if, you, if you don't have that, then, then no, you're not, you're not ready. You just have to be confident in yourself and in what you bring to the table to these schools. And, um, and that's what I have to say. Be confident yeah. in yourself. We need, we need more, more candidates who come from diverse backgrounds, not only in terms of race and culture, but in what you just in your experience. And, um, and schools want that. You just have to have, you know how to tell your story. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Lex. This was so much fun. And I know that your story and all the advice you shared um, and your success now and forever is going to inspire and help a lot of people. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you. It was fun for me too. Thanks for watching our video. For more videos just like this, make sure you click subscribe. And if you want to work with us on your graduate school applications, visit us at theartofapplying.com or click on the link below in the description.